Hello, this is Mark from Sound Matters and welcome back to the channel. Today is a slightly different product review than normal. I'm going to do an all-in-one record player. So yes, this is an all-in-one record player that has built-in speakers and Bluetooth input capability. So slightly out of the usual for this channel, but what I wanted to do is see if this actual you know, all-in-one record player could perhaps be any good. Could it sound better than the infamous sort of poor sound quality that people know of things like a Crosley, for example. So this is the Angel's Horn H019 all-in-one record player. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Is this thing any good? So this all-in-one record player will play 33 and a third and 45 RPM records and comes factory fitted with an Audio-Technica AT3600 cartridge. For a budget cartridge, the AT3600 sounds really good in my experience, so this is a great start. What I'm really curious to see is really the reason I agreed to do this review is how this compares with something like a Crosley Cruiser, for example, as I think it's fair to say that a certain part of the market will always be drawn to an all-in-one solution. Not everyone wants or has the space for a proper hi-fi system with separate components. Other features include a built-in phono preamp and a line output for connecting to an external amp or powered speakers. There's also an auxiliary line in just in case you want to connect a phone or other device with a wired connection. The tone arm has an adjustable counterweight and is sat on some sort of suspension system for vibration control. Now, given that it has a built-in speaker system, this is a good thing. The platter is made from a die cast aluminium, which has to be said is quite resonant. Reminds me of a scene from Monty Python. It's a drive belt system, which Angel's Horn claims delivers perfect stability and rotation at the two speeds, which are easily adjustable using a simple dial. The same dial is used to essentially turn the device into a Bluetooth speaker. Said Bluetooth was actually really easy to connect, and it's a Bluetooth version 5 device and works really well. Aesthetically, it's a rather smart looking record player considering the low price of just $240 currently as I speak on Amazon. The wood effect gives it a very smart, living room friendly appeal and a fun vintage style. First impressions, I'm quite pleasantly surprised. But the thing is, cool aesthetics only get you so far. How does this low cost all-in-one record player actually perform? How does it sound? Is it any good? Let's get over to the turntable or should I say all-in-one record player and we'll take a look. So I spent a few days with this record player and here's what I found. On first play, I was actually quite impressed with how the speakers sounded. They sound a world away from the awful tinny sounding speakers on something like a Crosley Cruiser. These speakers actually have some depth and some bass to them. There's some substance to the sound. The motor though, it has to be said, is pretty noisy, particularly at 45 RPM. I also noticed a weird hissing issue at certain volumes. Listen to this clip as I turn the volume dial you can hear how the hiss comes in at mid volume and then bizarrely drops again as you increase to the maximum volume. Another issue I noticed was the platter stability. There's a little bit of a wobble there, which contributes to the wow and flutter. Noticing the lack of adjustable anti skate, I became curious as to how this function would actually perform. I used the old blank vinyl trick to see how the tone arm would perform, and as you can see, it shoots inwards pretty quickly, which isn't what we want to see. So I emailed Angel's Horn to ask about the anti skating, and this is the response I got back. So the contact at Angel's Horn went on to talk about how the anti-skating is mainly achieved by adjusting the counterweight, which is a little bit strange, and then went on to talk about skipping issues, which actually wasn't in my initial questions. I was a bit confused by that, to say the least. There was then some talk about adjusting the counterweight beyond what is recommended by Audio-Technica as the um, optimal tracking force for this particular cartridge, and wasn't something that I was willing to go to. Now, I know VCA and anti-skating are related, but I was left pretty convinced that the anti-skating on this record player isn't what it should be, to say the least. 
I also used a test record to listen for the effect and there was some distortion on the left channel as the stress test increased. The speed consistency also had me intrigued. I used a well-known speed test app on my phone to get a rough idea and while these apps have a reputation for not being entirely accurate, we can get some idea of how it compares to a higher quality turntable by comparing the results with my Technics SL1500 and the Fluence RT85 which is currently set up in my living room. The Technics were spot on, pretty much flawless as you can see. The Fluence a little less so uh, but it was still a very good standard. The HO19 actually ran quite slow which made me wonder how much of the weight of my phone might be dragging the motor. To gain an idea, I removed the phone case to see if it made a difference, and lo and behold, the turntable then ran too fast. I think we can safely say that I don't think we're dealing with a very high quality motor here. To wrap up though, all in all, I think it's important to look at each product in its context. The HO19 is certainly a long way from being an audiophile product. The tone arm feels very plasticky and there's definitely some design flaws. That said, this definitely sounds a world apart from a cheap Crosley Cruiser, and it would definitely make a better introduction to the vinyl hobby. It's important to note, however, that Crosley do actually make some higher quality models than the infamous Cruiser suitcase model. I think in this case, you have to take this record player on face value. For some people, the ease and convenience combined with the look and style will give this record player a great appeal. For those seeking an audiophile vinyl experience and to discover the true capabilities of this format, this is not the product for you. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I actually bought my daughter a Crosley to see how she took to the hobby, and I'm pleased to say she loves it. So now might be a good time to donate this record player to her as the next step in her journey, for example. If you're older than my daughter, she's, you know, only seven, I highly recommend that you look at models from Fluence, Project, Riga and Audio Technica to make that little bit of an extra investment into something that's built by a more established turntable brand. Before I wrap up, there's a couple of little omissions that I think are just a little bit sort of glaringly obvious things that I think if were added would improve this product. One of them is a headphone output at the front so that somebody could listen in private. And the second thing is, is when you use the line out at the back to connect to external amps or speakers, it doesn't seem to defeat the internal speakers, which seems a little bit strange to me. It should be designed to defeat the inbuilt speakers when you send the line out signal to an external source. So, you know, it's got some issues, it's far from perfect, but hey, you know, it's definitely an upgrade on a Crosley suitcase record player. So now it's over to you. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Have you had any experiences with record players or turntables from this brand? I'd be very keen to hear some of your experiences based on what I've, I've heard here. This is just what I thought, but what's your experience? And also, if you'd like to support me further at this channel, if you like what I do here, then check out the description of this video where there's some neat little discount codes so you can get money off vinyl gear to feed your ho um, hobby, your habit or hobby. Don't feed any habits. Um, <laughs> I get a very small commission and it's at no extra cost to you so do check that out in your own time and i appreciate your support also there's my patreon page of course where there's a b shootouts where you can get kind of insights into what kind of gear to buy i'm doing a lot of cartridge a b shootouts at the moment please do check that out in your own time as well and thank you to all of you who already support me over there at the patreon page if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing i'd love to have you on board but until that next video guys keep spinning the records keep enjoying the music and i'll see you in the next one cheers